Hello and welcome to this month's episode of Diversity and Inclusion, Addressing the Elephant in the Room. I'm Lindsay Bridges and through this series of podcasts, I'm going to be talking to you about DHL Supply Chain, UK and Ireland's diversity and inclusion journey through a range of diversity topics. And I'm going to be doing this by talking to a number of colleagues from across our business. Today, I'm really delighted to have two of our Future Leader graduates with me on the programme. Toby and Sahil are both joined our business around 18 months ago, and they're on a, a fast track management programme. If we in DHL Supply Chain want to change the diversity of our management population, we really need to start with those that we're bringing in at our graduate level. So the idea of this programme is that within five years, participants in the Future Leader Programme should become site leaders or general managers in our business. So welcome, Toby and Sahil. And I'm going to kick off with a first question for you both, which is, um, why did you decide to join DHL Supply Chain? So maybe, Toby, I'll throw that over to you. Yeah, sure. So the reason why I decided to choose DHL and you know, DHL Supply Chain was, first of all, DHL is an international company with so many brands underneath it. And I thought that it would be the best place to not only develop my leadership skills while having the opportunity to network with individuals across the globe, but also finding my pace in terms of career development. And DHL for me was best, especially the DHL values. Um, and that's something that I really connected with. And then the just as a whole, you know, is a very fast paced and fast growing industry. And, you know, if anything has taught us within COVID is that it's something that is actually needed in everyday life. And I don't think we really realise that. So to be part of a logistics company and or logistics industry is something, again, that I've really found fascinating. I thought would be best to, again, develop my skills and sort of find where I want to see my career to go. And what about yourself, Sahil? Why did you decide to join DHL Supply Chain? Uh, good question. Uh, funnily enough, uh, when I was uh, applying for graduate jobs, as with many other graduates, uh, I, I had a few job offers on the table and uh, it was a difficult decision for me. But when I really looked into it and uh, I looked into DHL as a, as a company, I realised that DHL itself uh, were going to offer me plenty of opportunity for growth and development. And more than anything, that's what really ma mattered to me. Uh, the, the size and the scale of the organisation itself uh, is really a testament uh, to the fact that you you know you've got plenty of opportunity to grow and develop within the organization uh, like many graduates when you do leave university uh, you, you can be a bit lost in terms of what you want to do and trying to identify that thing uh, that is that you really want to do and for me that was definitely the case I was still you know out there seeking a kind of a that my, my, true, my true path that I wanted to take, that's what uh, element of DHL appealed to me. Uh, that the fact that it has plenty of opportunity to grow, develop, not only within UK, but globally uh, as, as an international company. Uh, and the diversity that also uh, exists within DHL appealed to me as well. I didn't want to join an organisation that didn't represent uh, the, you know, the diverse culture and communities that it serves. Uh, and when I looked into DHL again, you know, if you look across the whole world, DHL has a very diverse workforce. Uh, and that's, again, what really appealed to me and sold it to me to, uh, to convince me that DHL was the right choice for me. Yeah, I mean, you both mentioned the fact that, you know, despite joining the business within the UK, we are you know, the most international company in the world, actually, active in 220 countries and territories. And, and it is amazing for people who actually want to take a role in different places, that, that ability is there. So, so Hill, tell me a little bit, just before we get further into it, tell me a little bit about yourself and your background. Yeah, so in terms of myself, uh, I'm actually British Bangladeshi. Uh, my parents moved to this country about 35, well, my dad moved to this country 35 years ago, uh, and then he, he settled down here. Uh, I've uh, always pretty much uh, stayed in UK. I've never moved abroad or anything. Uh, I've been back home a couple of times, uh, but I would uh, class myself as 100% uh, pure British, uh, and I'm from Scotland, uh, so that's, that's a nice mix, as, as I've been told by many people as well. So Toby, tell me a little bit more about you know yourself and your own personal background. Yeah, sure. So I am from Essex. I'm British born. I was born in North London, and you know 
raised in Essex slash East London. Um, I'm from Nigerian heritage, as you can probably tell, my name is Toby. And, you know, part of our culture is <laughs> when you're naming your child, you know, your mom, your dad, their parents, the older siblings on their side of the parents give you a name. So I ended up with 12 names. Wow. So it's Toby for short. It will be funny if everyone goes around calling me Oluwa Toby Loba, Shekeke, Ad, Isabel, Abin Paula, Fuji Solo, Oluwa Kemi. You know, it goes on forever. So we just give us Toby and Shekeke, you know, coming from a Nigerian heritage and always flying to Nigeria and being raised by Nigerian parents, even though my mom was born here, my dad was born in Nigeria. Everywhere I go, you know, I can't hide the fact that I'm Nigerian. You know, my name is Nigerian. I'm Black. I'm from Nigeria. Um, and, you know, something that, as a Nigerian female, as a Nigerian woman, something that, you know, my parents sort of instilled in me is always to stay true to yourself in terms of your heritage, in terms of your culture. And something that, again, is really instilled in us, there's also an element of, you know, don't show too much and, you know, sort of be, be careful, be quiet, because you're lucky to have been put in the position that you're in among others. And something that, you know, I, I remember actually asking my mom about this, like, why do you always tell me be grateful for, you know, you've got this far in a job interview or you're working in this job, be grateful, try not to be too loud, you know, try not to say certain things, be humble. Why is it that, you know, I have to be told that, but when I go to work, it seems as though, you know, my colleagues at work don't really follow by that and they're happy to embrace. And my mum was like, you know, you're black. And at the end of the day, these are the struggles that you face when you're, you're, you're a black woman. So not only are you black, which is, you know, you're a minority, you're female, which has its own struggles in itself. And, you know, again, me having a disability is something which my parents don't want me to share with people because it's like, you're already at a disadvantage of being black of being a woman and then you now want to add dis disability to it, don't do that, you know? And being raised in that sort of environment, I understand where my parents are coming from. And in a sense, they're trying to protect me, they're trying to protect my future, my future in, in, uh, ambitions, you know? And yes, it did make me feel stronger, but at the same time, I always look to institutions, companies, schools. Why is it that, you know, we're sort of made to feel like an imposter wherever we go. And, you know, that's sort of a question I always ask every institution, where's the place for me? Where am I able to feel comfortable? Like, how can you adopt your working ways to make me feel comfortable as well and feel included, even though it may not necessarily be on purpose? With the generation that I'm in, the heels in, and, you know, how open now conversations like this are happening, I think it's something that is starting to change and something that all industries, whether it's logistics, financial industry, it's starting to embrace a lot more and sort of make themselves more consciously inclusive in terms of finding out more and adopting their management styles, their working styles to be more accommodating to those belonging to the minority. Brilliant. Thank you, Tulian. Thank you so much for sharing that. That was uh, really really insightful and I really appreciate that you were you, you felt comfortable in talking a little bit about your upbringing. So Toby, um, you've been with the business about 18 months now in an operational role, which to be honest, um, you know, might be a different experience as a black female in our business. Tell me a little bit about what you've, uh, what you've seen and learned over the last 18 months. Looking back at my personal experience within DHL, I'm gonna reflect back, you know, from my very first day, my very first interaction with DHL, which was Whistlebury Hall. And, you know, I remember walking in my first day, looking around the room, and I was the only black female there. And, you know, situations like that don't usually take you by surprise. It didn't take me by surprise, but I sort of, you know, had a feeling of, you know, I stood out and I kind of knew that I stood out. And I remember coming to you, Lindsay, I'm not sure if you remember this, um, and we had a brief conversation because you highlighted that, yes, you know, the board is very white. It is very male dominated. And, you know, you as a company, as a board, you are looking to change that. And I do remember coming up to him, we had a small conversation. I said, I understand what, you're, what the company is looking to do and how they're looking to change and make this shift. And, you know, I asked you, how can I fit in and how can I help and what can I get involved in to do with inclusion and diversity? 
And since then, since the past 18 months and since we've had that conversation, I've seen such a huge change in terms of, you know, seeing more black faces, more female faces pushed out there, whether it be on our, you know, internal communications or, you know, having conversations, you are seeing a lot more come through. And, you know, even looking now at the new graduates coming, the new cohort coming in, there is, you know, more black female faces coming through, a lot more black faces or, you know, Asian or minority ethnic faces coming through, which is really great to see compared to, you know, my first experience. And for me, what that actually means for me is that, you know, I was kind of listened to by, you know, yourself and I've seen the changes as the months have progressed. And, you know, for me, it not only shows that DHL cares about it, but it's like there's actions to follow through from the changes that, you know, I have seen. So I'll say that was my first, you know, experience and looking back for diversity and inclusion within DHL. You know, it is interesting that you've noticed that because you're absolutely right. In the, 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 the most recent graduate intake, 17% uh, Black, Asian and minority ethnic and 48% female in that intake. And I'm very proud of that because if we want to change the, the sort of makeup of our management in the future, we have to start bringing in graduates uh, of a different background and a, a more diverse space. So I'm, I'm pleased that, you're noticed, that you've noticed that. So Sahil, let me turn to you. And you've been with the business about 18 months now. Tell me a little bit about your experience in that time, particularly from a DNI perspective. So, you know, when, when I was joining my first placement, I, I wanted to be transparent. I was pretty clear uh, to my general manager uh, that one of the fundamental uh, beliefs of mine was my Friday prayers. Uh, so as a, as a practicing Muslim, we have uh, Friday prayers and it's like your Sunday mass, if you like to put it. Uh, we've got prayers five times a day, but the one that's on Friday that needs to be performed at the mosque. And that's one thing that's always stuck by me since uh, since high school, pretty much since I've been a mature kind of uh, teenager. Uh, I've, I've always went to my Friday prayers. So I wanted to make sure whatever role that I was doing or whatever job that I was going to do, uh, they would uh, give me that flexibility for my Friday prayers. Like I said, I had my reserves and, and I thought to myself, you know what, it's going to be a challenge, uh, but it was a challenge I was going to, you know, stand up for because it was fundamental to me, while so was the job because I actually, you know, wanted to join DHL. Uh, when I went to the, into my uh, first site and I spoke to my GM, I was, I was quite surprised uh, of how he took it. Uh, and I mean that in a very positive way because he was very respectful towards my religious beliefs and uh, he made it quite uh, clear that, you know, he didn't want me to feel I'm in a position where I had to sacrifice uh, my religion for a job. So he said, look, as long as, you know, we come to an agreement, uh, how I'd done my work patterns and made up for the hours, he's happy as long as I got my job done. Uh, so, you know, I was very appreciative uh, of, of my GM and I hadn't even known him at this point. Uh, and, and that initial first step my GM took by giving me a little bit of flexibility and giving me that trust uh, to make sure, you know, whilst I go for my prayers, I make up for my hours or, you know, including lunchtime, however I, I worked it out. Uh, I was very, you know, grateful for what he'd done. I've been in situations where I've thought to myself, do I raise my hand up and say to my manager, I need to go for my prayers or is that going to be awkward? It's not easy. And, you know, you can be in a difficult position. And I think my experience, uh, the first year anyway, certainly, uh, of joining the business, uh, it was really, it really glowed and blossomed because of the people I had around me. You know, that's a great story, Sahil. Thank you for sharing that. And some really, uh, some really super feedback about your colleagues and how they really did make you feel like you could bring your best self to work every day. Thank you. So, Toby, you've already said that you've seen some positive change over the last 18 months. But, but tell me, what else do you think that, that we at DHL Supply Chain could do more of to be a more inclusive employer, particularly within our operational environments? So yeah, what I think DHL could do more of is, you know, hosting platforms like this, going down to operatives, having open conversations about, you know, inclusion and diversity about culture making you know the working environments a bit more comfortable for individuals to speak about where they're from you know what their culture is like you know a bit more you know con more conscious inclusion in terms of focusing on you know finding out more about individual identities cultures race and so forth I also think looking at the logistics industry as a whole you know, 
upon my research is something which the logistics industry kind of shies away from. Again, you know, it's not something that I, I know the reason why, I'm not too sure, but for the company that I work with, it will be nice to see DHL at the forefront of it and really pushing the logistics industry in the direction of this is what we stand by in diversity and inclusion. And, you know, relating back to, I can only speak for myself in terms of being black, female and disability. You know, we spoke about how the percentage of new um, BAME colleagues that have come up through the graduate scheme, it'll be nice to, you know, have more transparency because, you know, I only know this because I'm speaking to yourself. It would be nice to have, you know, clear figures. This is where we were before. This is how we are now. This is what we aim to be like by a certain amount of time. And I think that would also aid, push, you know, the cultural change that we're currently going through and really add a positive tone to it and also become industry leaders in terms of inclusion and diversity as well. I think you've got some great ideas there, particularly around, you know, communicating better uh, the progress we've made to date and what our aspirations are. So thank you. Thank you for those ideas. And I will take those away for sure. So, Hale, if I turn to you now, what um, you've already talked about your experience at Livingston and your first placement and how included you felt as the, you know, the first time they'd really had a, a practicing Muslim on site. Tell me what more you think we could do, though, as an overall business around the DNI agenda. Talking in business perspective, uh, the management community need to represent the people that they're serving or, or the people that are leading the business. Uh, and our, you know, our warehouses are, you know, if you go into a warehouse, you'd know yourself. The characteristics and, and the backgrounds you'd, you'd find in our warehouses, it's, it's amazing. It's, uh, you know, we need to celebrate that cultural diversity uh, within our businesses. Communication, it, it's it's. It's very, very important. You know, you, you'd know from your career as well. Uh, communication is very important for any, any, any parts of the business. And for this particular agenda, the diversity agenda, one thing I've noticed is people aren't, you know, again, I don't want to use the wrong words here, but people aren't bo born, uh, they're not born kind of with the mindset of indifferences. They're not born with that. It's the environment they grow in uh, that, that makes them, you know, think to themselves, you know, he's different than me or she's different me, than me. If you grow up in a kind of cultural and uh, a good diverse mix of people, then you obviously respect other people's uh, backgrounds and beliefs. And we need to be the change we want to see. So yeah, we definitely need those uh, diverse backgrounds within front line of our business. You know, there's a few things there that you said that really resonated with me. I mean, be the change I'm a very strong believer in. But but one of the things you talked about was, you know, we're, we're all, you know, we're all born kind of, you know, equal and without any discriminatory thoughts in our heads. Right. As 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 children in, mm. in the environment. And I I grew up like. Like yourself, you grew up in, in Scotland and you'll understand a little bit about this, but I grew up in Northern Ireland where, of course, you're either Protestant or Catholic, but you don't ask them <laughs> which they are. And so you grow up with that, um, with, with that, with that bias within you. you. You can't avoid it. It's part of how you, the environment that shapes you. And I, I, I'm not scared to admit that I, I would have grown up very much with a, with a bias and a prejudice. And and it was probably when I moved away from Northern Ireland and when I traveled to other countries and when I began to mix with a much wider group of people that I've really begun to learn more about this agenda and seen this agenda. So it's, it's really interesting in terms of that, you know, that unconscious bias and how that shapes us. So Tilby, you've talked about, you know, some of the challenges that you face as a black female and you've talked about, you know, imposter syndrome. Um, as as something that I think many black females in in our business and that I that I know struggle with, tell me what you think we could do to to help set you up for success as a future leader in our business. Yeah, I mean, again, it goes back to having open forums like this. You know, throughout the time we've you know been speaking, you've always said to me, Toby, make sure you feel comfortable. Don't be afraid to say anything or show yourself or show your personality. And that's sort of where it, where it starts, you know, it's starting to, you know, make the environment that we're in more cultural aware, more cultural comfortable. And, you know, again, ensuring managers as well to not feel uncomfortable in asking certain questions or even saying the word black or even saying, oh, you've shown credit as a female, male, what, what's your preference? You know, how would you like to be addressed? How would you like to be accommodated? So I think it starts there. And then 
taking it a step further, setting up for success. I mean, for me, it will be it is it will be nice to sort of look up to the hierarchy and see someone who looks like me in a higher position. I mean, it would be nice to to see that. And even though again, it is like you said, it's a marathon, not a race, and it will take time. You know, who knows? Maybe I could be the person. You know, another graduate could look up to and say, "Oh, she's been in the company within three mm-hmm. years. She might not be, you know, at this level of management, but she's got she's made this far. She's had this impact, and so." you know, grow more role models within the Bain community for all of us to look up to. And again, more of the pushing of cultural change, I think that would help setting up up for success, more of open forums as well, you know, just having an open conversation and, you know, more set in stone of this is the expectation of what, as a company, what DHL stands by in inclusion and, and diversity. Brilliant, thank you. Some great ideas there. I really appreciate you sharing that. So Sahil, um, tell me what you think we could do more of to help kind of set you up for success as a future leader in our business. So one of the things uh, I think uh, that we can do and the responsibility lies uh, in both ends when I say this is be the change you want to see. Like I've said earlier on, you know, we and I know I know many people that say, oh, you know what, my company doesn't support me in this, doesn't support me in that. But need to speak up about these things. You know, you, you can't you can't keep it within yourself and then expect your line manager to know what's uh, what's uh, you know what's going on inside you. You you need, really need to speak up about that because, like we've already discussed, sometimes it's a case of education. It's not that you know somebody is being bad or somebody wants to you know be you know not not allow you to do something uh, that's uh, that's part of your core fundamental values. It's just because they don't know about it. So if you have those open dialogues, it will definitely help. Uh, something else I would uh, mention as well is that people really need to be encouraged within our business uh, to really be themselves. Uh, I think uh, being ourselves acts as a natural filter. Uh, and, and not only does it help you mentally uh, in terms of being happy, but again, you know, you, you really kind of, you know, blossom uh, as an individual within the business. And that's, you know, that's the impression I've got so far being within DHL. DHL want their colleagues to blossom and be the best they can be. And uh, the only way you could do that is if you be true to yourself. Yeah, thanks for that. Some great ideas there from you as well, particularly around, and it's um, very interesting for me, is how do we really get everybody in the business, including all of our frontline colleagues and drivers and in our transport and warehouse operations involved. That's great. So, Hale, just really short, one last closing sentence from you. How do you feel about the future? Uh, I would say I feel optimistic and very bright. Uh, I'm definitely enjoying being with my time in DHL and seeing uh, some of the future plans that we've got in terms of growing. So I I feel very optimistic uh, and I see it being bright. Brilliant. Optimistic and bright. I love that. Thank you. Toby, I'm going to ask you, closing statement from you, give me three words that describe how you're feeling about the future. Yeah, so I'm feeling inspired, proud, and optimistic slash ready to go, ready, ready, ready for change. Brilliant. Excellent. Thank you. Listen, thank you both very much. I just want to wrap this session up in one short, uh, one short paragraph. So today I've had a super interesting conversation with two of our future leader graduates, Toby Ann and Sahil. They've talked about their experiences in the last 18 months in DHL supply chain. They've given me some great food for thought as to things that we could do better building on, but building on the changes that we've already made and that they've actually seen in the last 18 months. So I'd like to say thank you both very much. I really, really enjoyed the conversation today and I look forward to seeing uh, more of you out and about in the business. So looking ahead to March and our next episode of DNI addressing the elephant in the room, next month I'm going to be talking around the theme of International Women's Day because that happens in March. I'm going to be talking with some of our senior female operators in our business around how they have progressed their careers and, and maybe some of the hurdles that they've had to overcome. So look out for that next month. Thanks.